So that satisfy your accuracy tendency to the power minus three. I have also told you in the next we will discuss x, x is equal to under root t. Now what we discuss in by section method that we do iteration. We take a one equal to a and your b one equal to b. Then if your f of a one or your f of b one is zero, that means A or B is the perfect root. A or B is the perfect root. That means we have found the root. We need not do anything. Next, what we have to do if it does not satisfy. That means this condition does not hold. That is F A one neither F A one is zero nor F B one is zero. Then. In that case, you define a number c one that is a one plus b one by two. Then you check for c one. That if your f of a in f of a one into f of c one comes out to be less than zero, then what you do in the next iteration? That means in the next iteration, your a two will be a one, but b two will be your C one, you will copy your value C one into B two, and if this condition is satisfied, F C one into F B two less than zero, then in the next iteration you take A two as C one, but same B two will be your B one. So in this way you perform your iteration. The stopping criteria is that the difference that means. C n plus one minus C n is less than your. In case of absolute error, this is your stopping criteria. This is your stopping criteria. If it is given that up to this accuracy, this is your desired accuracy. So this is your desired accuracy, which you want in your approximate solution. If it is for absolute error, C n plus one minus C n less than epsilon. Or if it is for relative error, then you take C n plus one minus C n by C n less than epsilon. So this is your de desired accuracy. Sometimes for the stopping criteria, it also gives us that the uh, difference between the iterations. Suppose whenever you do iteration, you have firstly b one minus a one. This will be your length. Whatever you have length over here. Then your length will be decreased by half at every step. Why? Because you are breaking the interval a mid at the midpoint. So at the next iteration, it will be half of b one minus a one. In the next, it will be half of this. That means half square b one minus a one, and up to so on. So it, when you have to find the approximate root, we will define that how you have to stop this. So we have done example for this. I am doing next example. That is, you have x is equal to root three. You have to approximate this. Class is there. You have. Please unmute yourself. Please mute yourself. So if you have x is equal to root three and you have to approximate the root up to ten raised to the power. Minus three accuracy. So what you will do is you will take x is equal to two three. That means you are saying that x is your root three. Then what you have to find? You have found your x. So you have to form this equation. Anything I have also told you. If it is like x is to the power a one by n, you have to find. If you are saying this thing, that means you need not to find anything. For that you have to make it a function. So how you will make it a function? F x is equal to that will be x square minus three. So that will be your squaring both sides. So this will be your x square minus three is equal to zero because we are making it root finding problem. Root finding problem means we have f of x is equal to zero and we have to find the x. Right? So to you have to make this equation. So this is your x square minus c. So what you need, you want first a the initial value a, 
and b you need two approximation such that your f of a and f of b should be of opposite sign if they are of, of opposite sign the product will be less than zero so if i take a is equal to 1 you can check that f of 1 is your 1 square minus c that is your minus 2 that is less than 0 and f of if you take b as 2 that will be your 4 minus c that will be your 1. So I can take a as 1, b as 2. So in this case I have f1 into f2 that is my less than 0. So now neither f of 1 is 0 nor f2 is 0. That means we have to perform the bisection method because we have discussed only bisection method. So in every uh, uh, question you have to make a table that will be your A. Fine. Next. Your sign for the F of A. Then you have B. F B. C. And then your F of C. Now at your first iteration, this must be here, I can write these are the iterations. So if there is an iteration, first at the first iteration you have A1 and A is your negative, B is 2 and FB is positive. So C if you find, but we are saying that is the midpoint of A plus B. So you have A over here, this value, B is this value. So if you will find 1 plus 2 divided by C, that comes out to be your 3 divided by 2, that is 1.5. If you check the value of this, you have to convert it into, uh, you have to check if you find that that will be your negative value. So, in this negative value, now what is this? You have, you can replace now with C, uh, your A with C. That means at this iteration, your A will be C because f of c is negative. So, we can replace a by c. So, this is 1.5. This value is negative. b2 will be same. This is positive. Again, now you find the midpoint of this number and this number. So, you have 1.7. Please mute yourself. So, you have 1.75. In this case, if you find f of c that comes out to be your positive. Now what you will do, you will copy your c variable into b. That means in the next iteration, you will have a, a will be same, that is your negative, b will be replaced by 1.75 because the value is here as positive. So now if you find the midpoint of these numbers, this comes out to be your 1.625 if you find the value in here this will be your negative that means this value will be replaced by 1.5 so you have 1.625 here this is negative b will be remain same 1.75 positive again you find the midpoint of 1.625 and 1.75 you will have 1.6875 negative. It is negative over here. That means you will replace it by this. Now you will hear 1.6875. The value is here negative. You have value as B as 1.75. The value is here is positive. You have midpoint as 1.7188. This is your negative. That means you will replace this value again with 1.7188. The value here is negative. You have now 1.75. If you find the midpoint of these numbers, this will come out to be your 1.7344. The value if you find it is here positive. So now your A will remain same. That is 1.7188 negative value. And your B is 1.7344. So now you have here is positive value. So it will be your 1.7188 1. 
plus 1.7344 divided by if you 2 you will have 1.72 1.7266 you have negative over here that means you will replace this value at 1.7266 negative over here now you have value as over here 1.7344 if you find the midpoint of these value you will have 1.73 Zero five. If you find, if you check, the value will be here negative. So you have a over here. Now is your. One point seven seven one point seven three zero five. The value here is your negative, and you have B as one point seven three zero five. One point seven three zero five. This was your previous stage because it was one point seven two six six over here, negative over here. This is one point seven three three. Can I raise the upper part? I have to do some. So you have one point seven two six six. That is your one point seven three zero five. You have over here negative, and this will be your one point seven three four four. This value is your positive. And if you find the midpoint of these values, it will come out to be one point seven three. Two five. If you check the value over there, this will be your positive. That means that the next iteration, your A will remain same, and B will be replaced by one point seven three two five. If you find the midpoint, this will be uh, your one point seven three one five. So you have over here one point seven three one five. You have value negative. You have one point seven three two five. You have positive value. Again, if you find the midpoint over here, this one point seven three one five, you will have one point seven three So you have one point seven three two over here, and this is your negative because it was saying you that your accuracy should be ten raised to the power less than minus three. That means if you will calculate c n plus one minus c n, you will not calculate over here. Now you have uh, c n. This was first your root as one point five, and this is your one point. Seven five. If you find the difference, that will be your point two five. Again, if you find the difference of next, you will have zero point one two five. You will have a over here zero point zero six two five. You have zero point zero three one two five. Zero point zero one five six three. Zero point zero zero seven eight two. You have to do it at every iteration. So that you can check your error should be less than ten raised to the power minus three. You have zero point zero zero three nine one, and this value your zero point zero zero two zero. This is your zero point zero zero one, and this is your zero point zero 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 five. That means here you have value ten raised to the power minus three. That means you have approximated root, approximation root of x square minus three is your one point seven three two. So this is your approximation, approximated root that you have taken only up to 
when your uh, error is 10 raised to the power minus 3. If you have given relative error should be like 10 raised to the power minus 3, then at every step you have to evaluate Cn plus 1 minus Cn uh, by Cn. So this is your bisection method and this is your example. Next comes your convergence of Next is your convergence of bisection method. Now could you please switch to the previous page? So here you have, uh, firstly you have started with the, uh, you have to find the approximate, approximated root of root 3. That means you will uh, take a function x square minus 3 is equal to zero, you have to take two initial approximation until it is not given to you. So when you will start, but that approximation you should take in such a way that they should be of opposite sign. That means the value of the function at one value should be negative and at the other it should be positive so that the product, their product will come out to be your less than zero. So when you will start, you will find first at the first iteration, you will have C is equal to A plus B by 2. If your C comes out to be negative, then you replace your value of A with C and B will remain same. Again, you will find your uh, midpoint until you will until you reach your uh, accuracy level. So we did it until we have reached the accuracy level. So we have found your approximated root is your 1.732. Is it clear? Ma'am? Yes. Ma'am, how does it know if it is negative or positive? Who does it know? FC, ma'am. It is given to you that your uh, accuracy, I have told you that you have to take uh, initially because uh, when we define a problem, we will give that you have to find the approximate root up to 10 raised to the power minus 2. The stopping criteria will be given to you that where you have to solve. If it is not given approximated root 10 raised to the power minus 3 and sometimes it is given that your relative error should be at most 10 raised to the power. That means your error should be less than 10 raised to the power minus 3. So in every step now you are finding your absolute error. Then you will find your relative error if it is given as per your relative error and if it is given for your number of iterations that your d minus a at every step like here you have b minus here as 2 minus 1 as 1 fine at the next you will have uh, 1.5 by 2 it will be point half then you have 0.25 it will be given to you that the stopping criteria so we have stopped when we have reached that my root, the uh, absolute error in the root is, 10 raise, uh, is less than 10 raised to the power minus 3. We, there we have stopped. Is it clear? Ma'am, I understand that the sign of FC is positive or negative. Ma'am, how do you know if it is positive or negative? You have to check. You have C value over here. Fine. You have to put the value of this C. That means you are finding for 1.5. That means you have to calculate 1.5. At 1.5 square minus 3, if you will calculate, this will be 1.5 square minus 3. You will have minus 0 0.75. That means you have negative sign over here. You have to calculate it. You have okay, to substitute this value of C. Like this, we are calculating for A and B. We are substituting the value in F. That for A and B, the same way we have to substitute the value of C in the given function so that we can check the given function is negative or positive in that. Is it clear? Yes, ma'am. Should I proceed further now? No, oh, ma'am. Should I proceed further? No? No, ma'am, no. So your next is convergence of bisection method. If it is given 
that you have to prove that your bisection method is linear convergent or you say we say the bisection method is or linearly convergent yeah or bisection method is bisection method has linear convergence or if it is given to you that find the convergence of your bisection method or it is given to you prove that the conver uh, convergence of bisection method is linear all will be same but when we are saying that this is convergence that means we are talking about sequence right how you define a sequence for example like we are doing for the bisection method i have this type of graph over here fine so suppose this is my a value and this is my b value fine now you can see that at this point your f of f of a is negative and at this point suppose the graph is Suppose the graph is like this, fine. Now you can see your f of a is negative, fine, and your f of a, f of b is positive. So this value is your f of a, and this value is of your f of b. Now you can see this is your root, or you can say alpha, or this is your psi. So when you take the midpoint of this something, like if you take first midpoint, sometimes it comes out to be here. Suppose this is your C one or I can take it. This is where my A one and B one and this the first approximation I am finding at. This is suppose this is your X one I am finding. Now if X one if you can see now your X one value is negative. That means you will replace your A one. That means your interval was this initially. Now your interval is this. Fine. Because and again you take midpoint. Suppose it comes out to be your here. This is your x two. Fine. Now in at x two you have value is positive over here. That means now you will take in instead of taking this interval. Now you will take the interval as this between x one and x two. So because x two at x two is positive. Now again when will you will take the midpoint. Ultimately, what you will, what you are doing, that you are going towards the root. Now, instead of taking now this interval, what you will take, you will take this interval. Fine, x three and x four. You will take this interval. Now, again, at this, again, if you find the midpoint, suppose midpoint comes out to be here, x four. Then, instead of taking this interval, what you will take? You will take the interval as this value x three and sorry, this is your x three and up to x four you will take. This is your x three up to your x four. Now you will take again. You find the mid interval uh, midpoint again. You are going here x five. So now you will take this interval x five to x four. Ultimately, what you are doing, you are having sequence. Of the points, first you have x one, then you got x two, then you got x three, x four, and your x five. If you have a sequence of the numbers, that means we will have. We are talking about its convergence. That will it converge to your root? If you can see, if you have, uh, uh, your conditions are satisfied that f x uh, is continuous in the given interval a b and f a and f b. Are less than product of f into f b less than zero. Then you ultimately have at least one root between your given interval a and b. That your intermediate value theorem says that if your two conditions we have talked about that continuity, continuous, and your f of a and f b of b less than zero, then your intermediate theorem that there exists at least one root. So we have checked that there is existing one root, and you are going towards this root. There exists at least one root alpha such that your f of alpha is zero. 
so you are converging to the root that means you have a sequence here so when you will uh, we are talking about the order of convergence we will we are talking about we are we will say in the bisection method is of linearly convergent that we are saying now because we are taking the interval let we have started the interval a and b first interval we are saying a1 and b1 that is my a and b let a1 b1 a2 b2 up to so on a n b n be the successive intervals be the successive intervals successive intervals produced by my bisection method fine right? because we are bisecting the interval at every step so at the first step i am saying that is my a1 b1 that is my a and b at the second step i am saying a2 b2 and a and b and so what we will have in this case if you see your figure uh, this figure if you can see this figure what we have initially we have this interval if i have x1 over here that is my new a1 so your first new a1 is greater than new uh, previous a1 a, that means your a, x1 is greater than a1 again x3 is greater than x1 and if you go towards this side your x2 is less than b x4 is less than b so we can write it over here my a1 i am saying that a1 is my a so you have a is equal to a1 because on successive interval you are moving towards the root so if you are moving towards root you will have this kind of situation ultimately it will be less than b fine we cannot go after this similarly for the b what you will have b you will have b1 your b2 b3 will be b2 will be greater than b3 this will be greater than b n and up to, if you can go ultimately what you will have a1 is this part clear or not how i have written this yes or no yes ma'am fine so because we are we have successive intervals we are moving towards the root so here we will have this value your a1 will be less than equal to a2 up to so on and it can go up to only b and b will be less than b1 b2 bn and it can go up to your a that means in this case i have the sequences i have one sequence as a n and one sequence as b n that means they are monotone monotonic monotonic you have studied that one is increasing other is increasing and that is and they are also bounded sequence they are bounded by a and b so if your sequences are a monotonic and bounded which implies so these that implies that these sequences will be convergent so these sequences are ultimately convergent fine right? because these are monotonic and bounded now since we have b1 minus a1 as your b minus a that we are taking the initial value next because we you, you are taking the midpoint of the interval that means what you will have at this point the length of the interval will be this half of b1 minus a1 because you are taking it at the midpoint fine right? or you can write it as half of b minus a similarly similarly you have b3 similarly you have b3 minus a3 is half b now half of but it will be b2 minus a2 that means half into half of this thing so it will be half into 
half that means 1 by 2 raised to the power square b minus a this step is clear because at first iteration you have the length of the interval is b minus a and when you will take the midpoint c is your a1 plus b1 by 2 that means if you will take the interval half half of the first interval that is b1 minus a1 now you have next interval this you will take the half of this interval so in that case you have the interval half of b2 minus a2 you have 1 by 2 square b minus a and if you proceed in this way what you will have half of b n minus a n that will be half of your b n minus 1 minus a n minus 1 so if you can see you have c over here c over here you have c minus 1 is over here that means it will be your 1 by 2 raised to the power n minus 1 into b minus a is this clear to all fine now when uh, we have seen when in the limiting case what you will have which implies your limit n tending to infinity b n minus a n you have b n minus a n that will be equal to your limit in n tending to infinity 1 by 2 raised to the power n minus 1 b minus a because n is tending to infinity what will be this term this term will be 0 so you will have 0 over here that means limit n tending to infinity b n minus a n is equal to 0 which implies your limit n tending to infinity b n is equal to limiting limit n tending to infinity a n suppose we are saying that it is some alpha we can say why we are saying because we are converging to the root and we are stopping the iteration there so what you will have over here you have studied in your calculus that if your function is continuous then you can take the limit inside that means limit n tending to infinity f of a and you can write it as f of limit n tending to infinity a n now your this thing is your alpha similarly for b and you have f limit n tending to infinity b and you have f of alpha over here now since in bisection method what you are doing now we know that what we are checking in every iteration now by bisection method what we are checking in every iteration that the product of root should be less than zero so by bisection method if i am at nth iteration what will i have f of a and i will check f of b and that will be less than equal to zero i am taking limit and then so if your limit this thing is your f of alpha this is your also f of alpha you are saying that it is less than equal to zero which implies f square of alpha less than equal to zero now you are saying square of something is less than equal to zero is it possible but condition you can only have that the function itself is zero at alpha that means alpha is the root of fx is it clear so you have alpha is the root of fx over here now at the last point what you are saying since what you are saying since your root lies between what will happen at the nth iteration you have like this you have started with this interval a and b then you are taking this in a1 b1 then you are taking a2 b2 suppose this is your root lying over here this is your root f alpha fine so what you are doing you are you have a3 over here b3 and at the nth iteration what you will have over here this will be a n this will be b n at the nth iteration you will have like this scenario i am taking more over here because i have to show something over here so now you can see your root lighter either you can your root like either 
in this interval or this interval. So since root lies between root lies in you can see your root lies in either in A and C and C and we are saying the root uh, sum at the uh, the value at the midpoint of A N and B N or your So your root lies in over here A N or C N or it will lie between your C N and B N. Therefore, what we will have over here now because alpha is your root and if you will reach up, you can see from the previous example also when you have reached up to accuracy, you almost are reaching towards your error. If you can check the root three value, that will be one point. 732 and something. That means you are nearby the root. So at that step, alpha minus C n. So obviously your error at this, that means that will be less than obviously C n minus, yes. Mom, he, uh, C n varbatana, since root lies in. This was your initially in interval A and A1, B1. Because you are breaking the interval at the midpoint, so you will have sometimes interval A to B to and you are. Now, when you are reach your nth interval, that means what you will do, you will almost reach nearby to your root. Fine. You can see in your previous example that when you have found the value of root 3 approximation, and it was 1.732 something you have value as this. 1.732058 and you have value. That means when you have reached up to some, you have, you are nearby this point. So your root must lie between either on this, either in this interval or in this interval, right? So alpha minus Cn. Cn we are taking the midpoint of this. Fine, Cn. So alpha minus Cn, what will you have over here? That will be obviously C, what will over here you have Cn minus this will be less than Cn minus Cn. Is it clear? Fine, because you are uh, Cn will be somewhat near over here. This will be this can either this can be Cn or this can be Cn. So if you can write alpha minus Cn, that means the difference between your root and your approximation value of Cn that will be always less than equal to this interval, whole interval. Is it clear? Yes or no? Like in the example you have over here, uh, root is your 1.732. Fine. That means it is lying between this interval 1.730.17325. That means the difference between these roots, the difference between these roots, fine? Because you are saying your root is alpha is equal to 1.7320508. If you can see this difference, alpha minus this Cn, we have find 1.732. This is less than equal to this interval. That is the difference between 1.7315 or 1.732. Fine. So in this case, you have. So you have over here, this will be alpha minus C and ultimately it will be less than the length of this type of interval or you can take it as B and minus C and. So you have B and minus C N over here so that you can write it as half of B and minus A N. Here I have included the midpoint. So that means this quantity is your E N. Your E N is alpha minus C N or you can write C N minus alpha but we are saying the error at N iteration. So this quantity is less than half raised to the power bn minus an and from here you can see 
your half of b n minus a n is less than equal to this thing. One by two raised to the power n minus one b minus a. So you have equal to this. This is less than one by two into one by two raised to the power n minus one b minus a. That means e n is less than one by two b minus a. So, if you are talking about n plus one as hydration, what you will have? E n plus one that will be C n plus one minus alpha, or that will be less than one by one by two raised to the power n plus one over here B minus a. When you will divide it, when you will divide it, you will have E n plus one by E n. That will be less than one by two, which implies e n plus one is less than half of e n. So you have p as over here one, which implies your bisection method is linearly convergent. Right. So the order of convergence of bisection method is the order of convergence. of bisection method is 1 bisection method is 1 that means jab humne order of convergence ki definition kari thi to meri p ki value jo aa rahi hai wo kya aa rahi hai 1 kis method ke liye bisection method ke liye that means it has linear order of convergence right so it has linear of order of convergence so this method is bit slow but it always guarantees that you will converge to the root right so this you can write some remarks for your bisection method so you can write the first is since it has i am talking about bisection method it means here bisection method since it has linear order of convergence linear order of convergence so this method is slow so this method is slow but it always guarantee but it always guarantees for the convergence of root what it means ki agar aapne aise a aur b choose kiye hain right jahan pe aapka function continuous bhi hai us interval mein aur aapke sign bhi change ho rahe hain function ke to ho sakta hai aapki iterations bahut zyada ho बट दैट गारंटीज की आप अपनी रूट के पास कन्वर्ट करोगे ही करोगे राइट right? कि एक्यूरेसी डेट डिपेंड्स आपने जैसे टेन रेस टू दी पार माइनस थ्री एक्यूरेसी ली थी अगर आप सपोज टेन रेस टू दी पार माइनस नाइन एक्यूरेसी लेते तो आपकी हाइड्रेशन उतनी ही इंक्रीज हो जाती बट एट दैट केस यू विल कन्वर्स टू द रूट ठीक है ऐसा इसमें नहीं होगा कि आप अपने मेथड से ही रूट से ही डाइवर्स हो जाएंगे कि आपका फंक्शन कुछ हो रहा और रूट कुछ हो रहा है बट इट ऑलवेज गारंटीज कि आप अपनी रूट की तरफ कन्वर्ट करोगे इज इट क्लियर राइट सो द नेक्स्ट इज यू कैन ऑल्सो कंप्यूट वी कैन कंप्यूट वी कैन कंप्यूट द नंबर ऑफ फाइट्रेशन द नंबर ऑफ फाइट्रेशन टू गेट द एक्यूरेसी Now what it means says कि अगर आपने लास्ट टाइम में एक्यूरेसी बोली थी ना कि मुझे टेन रेस टू दी पार माइनस थ्री एक्यूरेसी चाहिए कि मेरा आंसर जो है मेरा एरर जो है टेन रेस टू दी पार माइनस थ्री से छोटा हो तो यू कैन एस्टिमेट कि कितनी नंबर ऑफ हाइट्रेशन मेरी मिनिमम लगेंगी कि मेरी वो वाली एक्यूरेसी अच्छी हो दैट यू कैन ऑल्सो डू द फॉर्मूला लाइक दिस आई विल फर्स्टली एक्सप्लेन लाइक यू आर टेकिंग एनी इंटरवल फ्रॉम ए टू बी ठीक है 
आपने ये इंटरवल लिया ए टू बी ठीक है उसके बाद आपने क्या किया सी निकाला था मिड पॉइंट हो जाएगा तो आपने सी निकाला मिड पॉइंट क्या होगा इसी इंटरवल के बीच में आएगा इज इट क्लियर तो आपका रूट कहा लाई करेगा या तो इस वाले रूट में इस वाली ब्रैकेट में या आपका रूट लाई किस करेगा या वाली ब्रैकेट में इसका मतलब आपका पहले जो लेंथ ऑफ द इंटरवल था b माइनस ए अब आपका लेंथ ऑफ द इंटरवल क्या रह गया दैट इज रिड्यूस्ड बाय हाफ क्योंकि c आपने क्या लिया था उसका मिड पॉइंट इज इट क्लियर सो एट एवरी आइट्रेशन यहां पे आपने लिया कि आपका अब लेंथ ऑफ द इंटरवल क्या हो गया इसके लिए आपका लेंथ ऑफ इंटरवल इसके लिए और इसके लिए क्या हो जाएगा b माइनस ए बाई टू अब आप कह रहे हो या रूट आपका इसमें लाई करेगा या आपका रूट किसमें लाई करेगा इस इंटरवल में फिर दोबारा आप सी निकालोगे अगर इसमें लाई कर रहा है तो फिर दोबारा आपका वो क्या हो गया इंटरवल बाइसेक्ट हो गया दैट इज रिड्यूज बाय हाफ दैट मीन दैट नेक्स्ट आइट्रेशन अगेन इट इज रिड्यूज बाय b माइनस ए टू रेस टू दार टू सो आफ्टर एन नाइट्रेशन सिंस so you can notice here since the length of interval since the length of interval a b after n iteration is after n iterations is that will be your b minus a by 2 raised to the power n this is the number of iterations then we can find the accuracy is it clear yes or no ki jaise aapka pehle length of interval kya tha b minus a theek hai fir aapne kya kiya reduce kar diya wo kya ho gaya b minus a by 2 agli iteration pe kitna ho jayega b minus a 2 square the same way you will perform n iterations then you can see the length of interval will be this अब आप कह रहे हो कि मुझे एक्यूरेसी कितनी चाहिए सपोज मैंने कह दिया कि आई वांट दिस इज द एक्यूरेसी दैट कैन बी टेन रेस टू दार माइनस थ्री माइनस एट एनीथिंग राइट सो व्हाट डू यू मीन कि ये वाला जो है आपका ये आप ऑब्वियसली तभी कह रहे हो कि अगर आप एक्यूरेसी आपने इतनी अचीव करनी है एन आइट्रेशन आप तभी कह रहे हो ना क्योंकि आपकी एक्यूरेसी अचीव उतने पे होनी चाहिए राइट सो इफ यू सॉल्व दिस थिंग This will be nothing. This is b minus a, and this is epsilon into two raised to the power n. Because we have to find the n. Can I take log on both sides? Right. So it will be log b minus a. That will be less than. Here it will be log epsilon into two raised to the power n. So you have know that log of a into b that will be equal to your log a plus. log b so it will be log epsilon plus log 2 raised to the power n so when you will solve this this will be log b minus a minus log epsilon and you have also done that that log of a raised to the power n is equal to is equal to, that will be equal to n log a so that will be equal to log of 2 raised to the power n and that will be your n log 2 is it clear right so from here what you got the value of your n so which implies your n should be greater than log b minus a minus log epsilon by log 2 theek hai agar aapne jaise humne question kiya tha x x माइनस वन वाला वहां पे मैंने ए की वैल्यू क्या ली थी जीरो बी की वैल्यू क्या ली थी वन ठीक है और मुझे एक्यूरेसी वहां पे कितनी चाहिए थी टेन रेस टू दी पार माइनस थ्री राइट तो अगर मुझे चेक करना होता कि अगर मुझे एक्यूरेसी इतनी चाहिए मुझे कितनी आइट्रेशन परफॉर्म करनी पड़ेंगे यू कैन सब्सटीट्यूट इन दिस फॉर्मूला सो वट इट विल बी लॉग ऑफ दिस विल बी वन माइनस जीरो माइनस लॉग एप्सिलन that is your 10 raised to the power minus 3 and this is your log 2 if you will solve this this is coming out to be n is greater than 9.96 that means n should be greater than equal to 10 aap check bhi kar sakte ho 
कि जब हमने टेन रेस टू दी पार माइनस थ्री एक् चाहिए थी वहां पे मेरी इलेवन आइट्रेशन हुई है तब मैं अपनी अपनी एक्यूरेसी अचीव कर पाई राइट सो यू कैन ऑल्सो चेक फ्रॉम हेयर की फ्रॉम द लेंथ ऑफ द इंटरवल कि आपको कितनी आइट्रेशन मिनिमम परफॉर्म करनी पड़ेंगी कि आप अपनी एक्यूरेसी अचीव कर सको इज इट क्लियर द क्वेश्चन कैन बी फ्रॉम दिस पार्ट ऑल्सो दैट हाउ मेनी नंबर ऑफ आइट्रेशन यू आर रिक्वायर्ड टू डू टू अचीव द एक्यूरेसी टेन रेस टू दी पार माइनस फोर इन केस ऑफ बाई सेक्शन मेथड राइट so you will just take b value a value right substitute in this formula and you will get the minimum number of iteration right so here it is n greater than that means it is telling you the minimum number of iteration it requires theek hai isse kam iteration pe aapka answer nahi aayega isse zyada iteration pe ya iske equal iterations pe aapka answer aayega is it clear yes or no fine next is next remark is third remark if fa and fb are not of opposite signs then bisection method is not applicable अगर आपका फंक्शन चाहे कॉन्टिन्यूज भी हो रहा है बट आपको ए और बी ऐसे नहीं मिल रहे जहां पे आपका फंक्शन की वैल्यू ए पे पॉजिटिव हो या नेगेटिव हो दोनों ऑपोजिट साइन के हो तब आप अपना बाइसेक्शन मेथड नहीं लगा सकते चाहे आपको उसकी रूट पता ही है फॉर एग्जांपल इन दिस केस राइट इफ आई एम कंसिडरिंग एफ ऑफ एक्स इक्वल टू एक्स एंड आई वॉन्ट टू फाइंड That value of x that should be equal to zero, right? That means x square equal to zero is the curve. You know this is your parabola. Y is equal to x square. This is parabola. आपको यहाँ से सीधा ही पता चल रहा है कि x is equal to zero is the root, right? But आपको a और b ऐसे इस केस में नहीं मिल रहे हैं जहाँ पे आपका function negative एक पे negative हो एक पे positive that are of opposite sign. आपको रूट पता भी है तब भी आप बाई सेक्शन मेथड नहीं लगा सकते राइट बिकॉज एफ एंड एफ बी शुड बी ऑफ ऑपोजिट साइन इफ यू वॉन्ट टू अप्लाई योर बाई सेक्शन मैथड राइट द रूट एग्जिस्ट फॉर दिस फंक्शन एक्स स्क्वायर इक्वल टू जीरो के लिए आपका रूट तो एग्जिस्ट कर रहा है बट आप बाई सेक्शन मैथड नहीं लगा सकते अपना रूट फाइन करने के लिए इज इट क्लियर so this is the drawback ki agar aapka sign change nahi ho raha then you can't apply your this method and one thing more you can notice over here that for the function for the function for the function where there is singularity where there is a singularity and it reverses the sign and it reverses the sign at the singularity bisection method in this case bisection method may converge to the singularity bisection method may converge to the singularity that means ki agar aapka function singularity is kahan bolte ho jahan pe aapka function continuous nahi hai right ki agar aapka function jo hai wo sign change kar raha hai like you can consider a function f of x is equal to 1 by x and you want to find its root right that 1 by x is equal to 0 that will be this function this is your hyperbola right you can notice over here ki aap yahan pe a le lo jahan pe aapki function ki value negative ho rahi hai theek hai maine ye point le liya yahan pe aapke function ki value positive ho rahi hai right that means fa and fb are of opposite sign 
ये कंडीशन आपकी सेटिस्फाई है तो अगर आप ये वाले मेथड पे आप बाई सेक्शन मेथड लगाओगे तो वो कन्वर्ज करेगा दैट विल कन्वर्जिस टू सिंगुलरिटी पॉइंट जहां पे आपका फंक्शन जो है डिसकॉन्टिन्यूज हो रहा है Here you can see, this the function is continuous everywhere except your x equal to zero. तो अगर आप इस केस में अपना बाई सेक्शन मेथड लगाओगे तो वो जीरो को कन्वर्ट करेगा बट दैट इज नॉट द रूट दैट इज द सिंगुलरिटी ऑफ द फंक्शन Why? Because at x is equal to zero, my f of x is not continuous. So it will converge to the singularity instead of root. You can see here, yeah, this function ki aapki root exist nahi karti. It does not cut your x-axis. But still, yahan pe aapka f a or f b opposite sign ka hai, right? That means the sign is changing. Still, it is not converging to the root. It is converging to the singular point. because it is changing the sign there is it clear so this is all about bisection method jab bhi aapne bisection method lagana hai you should have one ki aapka function continuous ho aapne a aur b ki aise values choose karni hai jahan pe aapka function reverse kar raha ho sign tab aapki iterations zyada ho sakti hain apni accuracy achieve karne ke liye but surely you will converge to the root. ठीक है तब आप अपनी रूट के पास जरूर कन्वर्ट करोगे एनी डाउट इन बाई सेक्शन मेथड सो दीज ऑल आर द रिमार्क जहां पे आप बाई सेक्शन मेथड लगा सकते हो अगर लगाओगे तो वो किसको अप्रोच करेगा अगर फंक्शन कॉन्टिन्यूज नहीं है अगर आपके एफ ए एंड एफ बी ऑपोजिट साइन के नहीं है देन यू कॉन्ट अप्लाई बाई सेक्शन मेथड राइट एंड द ऑर्डर ऑफ कन्वर्जेंस इन दिस केस इज योर वन 